What up, everybody? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. It's been a little while since I've uploaded some content, but Hard to Kill is a couple days away. And yes, I'm going to give my predictions for these matches, but I'm going to do things a little bit different this time around. I'm going to be assigning each match a rating. Now, I've learned back in the days in my early 20s that the most fair way that you can rate system rate something is on a one to three scale. I know we have the five star ratings and we have rate something on a scale from one to 10. One to three is the most fair way that you can rate anything in this world. One being bad, two being okay, three being good. So I'm gonna be assigning a one to three rating to each of these matches and I'm gonna average them out at the very end to let you know how I think this pay-per-view is gonna shape out. And I'm gonna do that with every pay-per-view in 2020 now what is my system what, what, am, what am i basing these ratings off well i'm going to take it you know i'm going to base it off how good i think the match is going to be um, and and probably the build as well and the, you know the creative behind it so the the build is going to play a part in some of these because you're going to see that there's a couple matches here that i wasn't crazy about the build or i did like the build but I don't think the match will be good or I do think the match will be good. You know what I mean? So it's all a personal thing, but uh, I'm going to run down the matches here real quick. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do it quickly. So I'm not keeping you guys too long. So first match, and this is no particular order. I just kind of threw these together. Michael Elgin versus Eddie Edwards. I'm giving this one a three and I'm giving it a three based on the in ring and how good this match will be. I'm actually predicting that, I know that we're in talking, this is January 12th of 2020. We got a whole year to go. I'm predicting this is going to be the Impact Wrestling match of the year. If you've seen their match at Unbreakable, you'll know what I'm talking about. I was highly disappointed that they wrestled on this past episode of Impact. Um, it almost makes me want to give this a two. And the only reason I didn't drop it down is because now the match has stakes. They're putting the Call Your Shot Gauntlet trophy on the line. So there's something... There's something on the line now. There's stakes to it. But this one is built strictly not off the... the. I mean, I'm, the rating is strictly off how good I think the match is going to be. Not the creative, not the build, but the match itself. Again, super disappointed that this show was given away for free on television because it's going to be the best in-ring match. And I don't think what we saw on TV was a very good representation of what they can do. You know, by the end of the match, there was some strong style and there was... You know, it, it was pretty good by the end of the match, but it started out off really slow and the crowd was not into it at the beginning because it was just a bunch of slow chops and, and nothing was going on. So I was highly disappointed to see it on television. That's a real WWE move, but I'm giving it a three because I think the match is going to be that good. And my prediction for the winner of this one is Eddie Edwards. The reason I think it's going to be Eddie Edwards Maybe this is why they want to make him look like a little bit of an underdog losing to Elgin again. It's because they need to prepare themselves. If Brian Cage and Tessa Blanchard depart the company, they need to prepare themselves for someone to step into the top babyface role. And Eddie Edwards is the easiest person to do that with at this point, with Rich Swan on deck. Next match is the North versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack. I'm giving this one a three as well. And it's for a couple reasons. I think it's going to be one of the best tag team matches we've seen in a long time in Impact. Uh, the in-ring should be excellent for this. But I actually like the build because when we're talking about a tag team title match at a pay-per-view, most wrestling companies just put the match together. They're actually taking some time here to, to tell a story. And we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if Rich Swan is going to steal the show like he, he has been doing. I would imagine he probably will. But we don't know what's going on with Willie Mack. The North have been trying to turn him against them. So there's there's definitely some, um, some intrigue here because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But the match itself and then just the fact that there is a pretty decent storyline behind it, I got to give this one a three. Um, as far as the winner of this match, I fully believe the North will win. The North has uh, really put the tag team division on its back since the departures of LAX and the Lucha Brothers. And this is a swerve I'm going to throw at you guys here. 
I don't think it's going to happen because, again, if Cage and Tessa were to depart the company, and I'm just speaking hypothetically, if they're to depart, Eddie Edwards would have to roll to step into that top baby face, and then Rich Swan, as I said, would be on deck. But if I had to throw a swerve at this, I think it's a possibility that Rich Swan actually turns on Willie Mack as opposed to the other way around. So we've been they've been kind of teasing that maybe Mack's going to turn on him, but I think the possibility is there that uh, that Swan could do it. I don't think it would be very smart because he's really establishing himself as one of the top baby faces. But crazier things have happened, and I think it is a possibility, even if it's a ten percent chance. Next match. Ace versus Trey. I promise these are not all threes. <laughs> I'm giving this one a three as well because I love the storyline with Ace Austin and Trey's mom. Now, I wish they did a little bit more with it. You know, when you talk about the first couple episodes and they were building something with it, I was like, wow, this is going to build to something good. What really intrigues me about it, we already know the match is going to be good. We know the in-ring is going to be good. What really intrigues me is that you know, these guys are kind of comedy characters in a sense. They were able to take Trey and remember that he had that confrontation with Ace Austin in the stairway where he, he became serious for the first time. And that's something we need in a title match, you know, so now there's there's heat behind it. So I think they've done a really good job. The problem is they just cooled off. You know, I think there's been so much focus on Sammy and Tessa and a couple of these other storylines that aren't as interesting that they've backed off Ace and Trey a little bit, but um, that's a storyline I think they've done an excellent job on, but I was also really into the Ace and Alicia Edwards thing as well. Cage versus RVD. I'm giving this one a two. I'm giving it a two because I think it has the potential to be better than we're expecting it to be, just because Cage always puts on really good matches. Now, RVD against Moose at Slammiversary, I believe, was not a great match but at bound for glory in the tag team match you know he looked good and then the the rvd versus rhino match on tv i didn't think was good either so you know it, obviously rvd's up there in age but he's still a good performer and cage is a great performer so i think the potential is there the storyline itself i thought was done pretty poorly with what they were building backstage and then Cage came out to attack him that one week, but the live audience had no clue why, and it came out, came to crickets, you know, like, it, they didn't build anything in the ring, it was just all really, this backstage stuff, and it was, it was pushed really quickly, you know, remember Cage had the interview, and RVD interrupted him, and then interrupted him the next week, and all of a sudden, it had all this heat, so, it was really rushed, in my opinion, not as rushed as a couple of these other ones, but it was a little rushed, so I'm not a big fan of the storyline itself. Um, but I can buy it. I can buy, okay, Cage has stolen RVD's moves. I don't really see it, but I can buy it. Oh, I didn't uh, give you a prediction for the last match. Uh, Ace Austin, I think, will retain his X Division Championship. Um, but Cage versus RVD, I am going to go with... Um, I actually think RVD is going to win this match. I think he's going to be Brian Cage. Again, this is preparing... Cage for possibly not resigning, and then RVD is doing some pretty good heel shit, so I think RVD is going to win. Next match, Madman Fulton versus Ken Shamrock. As much as I like Fulton, I think this will be the worst match in Impact Wrestling, I'm not going to say pay-per-view history, but I would say at least in the last uh, three, four years, this is going to be the worst pay-per-view match. I'm confident in saying that, just because I don't think... Any of the matches we've seen Ken Shamrock in, I don't think he's looked good. You know, plain and simple. Great athlete. Great athlete for his age. Legend in wrestling. Legend in fighting. But the match, I can't imagine it being good. If he didn't have a good match with Moose, there's no way that this one's going to be good. I've got Madman Fulton winning this one. Next up, Moose versus Rhino. I'm giving this one a 1-2. Um, I was close to giving it a... a a two, but I don't know what to expect with the in ring. I really don't. And as, as good as I always say Moose is and that he always delivers, I had to drop this one all the way down to a one because the build was one of the most ridiculous things I've seen on, on an impact pay per view match in a while. 
to where they had the little run in at the elevator and then all of a sudden had this like manufactured heat 30 minutes later and then catering or something. I mean, that was so bad in my opinion. And they've already had a match before at Unbreakable that Rhino won. So, uh, and then there's the other part of this where I've said on a previous podcast that Moose is clearly doing a gimmick where he's trying to run through legends but they haven't communicated that to us at all on television. And then the way that Josh Matthews just, you know, randomly threw out, oh, Moose versus Rhino at Hard to Kill and then moved on to the next match. That was all done so poorly. And because I don't know what to expect with this, even though Moose will do his part, I don't know. And I'm not saying Rhino's bad in the ring. I just don't know what to expect from this. I'm not really expecting a good match. So it gets a one for me. Ty Valkyrie defending against... Um, oh, and I expect Moose to win that match as well. Um, Ty Valkyrie defending against Jordan Grace and ODB. I'll just throw it out there right now. I do think Taya is going to retain the championship. I did think that Jordan Grace was going to win it. Um, but since they, they tease a little bit of dissension between Jordan Grace and ODB. And ODB has two wins over Taya. Jordan Grace has a win over her. Uh, Taya is, I think, one in three since Bound for Glory on television. I'm pretty sure she's lost three out of four matches. So, and that's a real WWE thing to do. But with that being said, I, I can't see Taya. She's looked so bad, so weak on television since BFG. I can't see her dropping the title. I think she, I think she's going to retain it again. I think she will ultimately lose it to Jordan, Jordan Grace. And I think ODB wasn't really... A necessary addition to this match and when Jordan Grace and Taya had a match last time it was it was pretty damn good actually I think it was at homecoming no it wasn't, it wasn't at homecoming it was um, either Slammiversary or, or Rebellion I think it was Rebellion actually but uh, they had a really good match I think the three women when when you have a triple threat it's very difficult to do a triple threat with two baby faces they usually work with two heels so uh, the match, it could be kind of hit or miss. I don't expect this to be match of the evening by any stretch of the imagination. But because Taya has looked fairly weak on television, I actually think she's going to uh, retain the title. Now, we always like as Impact fans, uh, we, we hope that someone's going to show up at a pay-per-view. We hope that we're going to get some kind of surprise guest appearance. I think there is a possibility we see Kelly, Kelly Klein show up at this pay-per-view because of what she's got going on with her husband or a strange husband it's pretty safe to say she's not going to AEW she is the perfect woman to bring in to replace Taya if she departs the company who I think she will depart in 2020 she's a perfect girl to come in and then if you never return Tessa back to the knockouts division like this is this is the perfect person that you can bring in and I think they're going to do one of those things where she could show up at the very end you know, and catapult herself to the number one contendership right away like Impact likes to do. So I actually think, and I'm not trying to overbook this or, or fantasy book too much, but I, uh, my gut tells me we could see her at this pay-per-view. This is one of those matches, though I don't, it, it's tough to say who's going to win, but I, I do think Taya is going to retain. And then final match, Sammy versus Tessa. That's going to get a three for me because this is, has match of the year possibilities. Anytime we've seen them in the ring together, they've gone at it. And it's safe to say they're going to kill each other in this match. I've been super critical about the build to this because Tessa has steamrolled through OVE over the last several months. She has only lost to them once in Slammiversary, with the exception of Sammy one-on-one. She's only lost to them once, and that was the last time they had a match on television. She has beat them every single time. Doesn't matter if it's one-on-one, um, tag team, whatever. She, she always beats them, and she usually gets the win for her team. Doesn't matter how random her partner's about this build, because after she lost the match at Unbreakable, imagine if she would have just returned to the Knockouts division for a while, they could have found a feud for her with Jessica Havoc or something like that. Maybe she wrestles a couple dudes here or there. Can you imagine if she did that for several months instead of fucking around with OBE? 
She does this for several months. And then when Sammy wins the title, then Tessa's music hits. And it's like, oh, shit, we're getting this again. You know what I mean? Like, that would have just been so much bigger than the way they've built it, where it's like so obvious that Tessa's going to eventually wrestle Sammy Callahan for the title and beat him. You know, like it was we could just we can see it coming. We could we could see it coming the entire time. So I think the. I think the build was poor for the most part, but they've also hit home runs when it's been good. Like the backstage brawl and then the video packages we saw in this past impact were real good too. So I'm giving this one a three. It's the biggest main event that they've had in a long time. And then uh, the safe money's on Tessa, so I'm going with Tessa winning this match. But I'm going to throw this caveat out there. If they do not think Tessa's going to re-sign with the company, Sammy Callahan's going to win. And I, I fully believe if Sammy Callahan wins this match, that means Tessa is not sticking around. So keep that in the back of your minds. That's the only reason Sammy would win at this point. But I think Tessa's going to win. Don Callis has a huge heart on for her, and I think she's going to be the one. Averaging this out, it's a 2.25. So you can see I've got a lot of threes out there, a couple twos, but... Because Fulton and Shamrock and Moose and Rhino get ones, it brings it down to 2.25, meaning the pay-per-view as a whole is going to be okay. It's closer to a two than it is a three. As I've said, this is the most fair system that exists for rating anything. So we'll see how true it is. I actually don't think this is going to be the best pay-per-view in the world for Impact. They hit four home runs last year. I don't think this one's going to be a home run, but I think it's going to be a good quality, solid show with a major main event and then a huge Elgin versus Eddie match that is going to have people talking. Thanks for checking me out. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.